with After Yang, the latest from Kogonada, the wonderful film out of the Sundance Film Festival that uh, I got to rewatch over the weekend, and I know you got to rewatch too. Dude, look, <laughs> a lot of the Sundance movies that we caught are already coming out, which is fantastic. It's awesome. But the entire release strategy has completely changed to the point that um, some of our favorite movies are getting day and date releases. I'm conflicted. I'm happy about it. It's also like, I don't know, terrible for the movie. After Yang is also playing on Showtime. And Showtime has had yeah. this really, really good deal with A24 where they also have Minari. They also have Zola. Uh, the Humans, which was one of your favorites from last year as well. Immediately Beautiful on movie. there. Yeah. I love the fact. I will not complain about that. People get the chance to watch one of our favorite movies of the year. It kind of sucks, though, because of the rollout. Mm-hmm. But if you are looking for a Colin Farrell performance that isn't three hours long... Honestly, I feel like his performance in the Batman might have been equal to the amount of time he had over here. Right, the screen length. time. But After Yang is a fantastic movie from Koganada. Uh, his previous movie from Sundance was Columbus. Mm-hmm. Love that movie as well. This is a man who knows how to just create some of the best compositions. He started off doing video essays. I think a lot of people know him from that off of Vimeo. And this is a dude who walks the talk. And I'm glad to say that in his second, uh, in his follow-up, he has upped the ante because <coughs> I feel the story is even better than his previous one. Uh, Columbus was very emotional. And this one is too. Mm-hmm. But after Yang has elements and plot lines that could be their own movies, series. You know what I mean, Zach? It could be its yeah own thing. Hell, they were uh, practicing the choreography from that intro, which I thought was fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I after it. Yang, after Yang is a, a world in which you feel like you can just dive into all these different elements and and explore and find new stuff. Uh, you know, I I watching it again, I realized that I I might have messed up, man. This might have been the best movie I saw at Sundance this it's year. Dope, it is, dude. It's really good because when I saw it there, I knew I was leaving some some meat on the bone and I wasn't sure if it would be like the sinewy, tough meat, or that like juicy, meaty, fatty stuff that, that you can tendons. really dig into. <laughs> Man, it was it was the good stuff. It was nothing it but is. good stuff left. And and I was so impressed by the way that its story. I think a lot of times movies tell you their story, and this is this resists the urge to just tell you things. It kind of just lets the story unfold. Things happen, and you don't yet understand why they're significant to the rest of the movie Mm -hmm. until you've been able to sit with them. Um, And it is a movie that is really rewarding on the rewatch. You know, even stuff that you may not even think of, like that uh, credit sequence that went viral on Twitter, realizing that the characters in that sequence are the characters that then show up throughout the rest of the movie. Hmm. It's it's pretty cool, you know, when you get to actually figure out the movie and dive deeper and really absorb the world. I was I'm so blown away by Koganada's movie. It, it's easily going to be uh, in our top tens, I think, when we talk about those later in this year. 100%. Favorite out of Sundance. Yeah. And I'm looking even at the chat. Connor's saying that he's seen it five times. Woo! Is that in theaters? Is that in Showtime? Uh, either way, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I really do yeah. hope that people get the chance to see this. If Showtime has a free trial, it's a steal then at that point. Yeah. After Yang, one of the best of the year. I do think that, like you were mentioning, though, that day and date release, as exciting as it is to be able to get a movie like this and and right away be able to reabsorb it, it does take the wind out of its sails a little bit. And I feel like a movie like The Humans that you mentioned almost didn't get any hype at all, perhaps because of that situation. Just it, it... it's like the, like this Netflix effect where maybe there's a little bit of a surge of hype, but it dies out. And I don't know. I I see. I think when you see the way that movies like this can kind of become a little bit forgotten, it makes sense why certain movies go for the more slow build route. The way that something like Drive My Car, which has now become a huge thing now that's hit streaming, and it built to was it, yeah. able to use the theatrical momentum this to get did there it. first. I'm cool. I'm so cool with it going to streaming. The way that Drive My Car did it, the way that Zola did it, at least have an exclusive theatrical mm-hmm. window because at that point, you also have the theaters who see Day and Date and they don't want it because that's not HBO. When HBO did that last year, even HBO, what, what happened to them? No Thursday showings for all their Day and Date ones. I hated mm-hmm. that. It ruined its opening and for some movies like Malignant, it kind of ruined its rollout. For a movie like these, for, for something this independent, uh, not, not good, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. 